Echolegia cardia. is characterized by a triad of dysphagia, regurgitation and weight loss. If we can see here dysphagia, and it is pre-malignant, it is pre-malignant and it leads to development of squamous cell carcinoma of esophagus. So, it is pre-malignant to development of squamous cell carcinoma of esophagus. Okay. Now, I will write down all the questions which are asked regarding this topic. And then we can discuss them. What is this triple A syndrome? Triple A syndrome. What is the other name of this syndrome? And what are its features? And what is the investigation of choice? What are the findings? Okay. So this triple A syndrome is also known as all growth disease. A L G R double O V E. All Groves disease and it is characterized by three A's. It is achalasia, A lacrime, and A C T H resistant. adrenal insufficiency okay it is insufficiency <laughs> okay now what is the investigation of choice the investigation of choice for ecclesia cardia is manometry okay Manometry is the investigation of choice for all the motility disorders. Now, the findings on manometry on LES is, as I have already told you, there is increased pressure of the lower esophageal sphincter and there is absence of relaxation. There is increased pressure and absence of relaxation. And what are the found findings in the esophageal body? There is increased esophageal pressure there is a peristalsis in body there is a peristalsis there is ineffective contraction there is increased pressure of esophagus. Now, on barium swallow, the findings are we will be seeing something like this. So, this will be a bird beak appearance or a pencil tip appearance, bird beak, pencil tip or rat tail. Okay. Now, this is what, uh, okay, I will see to it. Okay. So, there will be a bird beak appearance, pencil tip appearance or a rat tail appearance in the barium swallow. We can see here on manometry, we will see a diagram like this. This diagram is known as Klaus plot. Why this is important? Because a question on the manometry findings has been asked in NEET PG 2020. So, we should 
know about the topic Klaus plot and what are the types of ecclesia as we have already discussed type 1 is the classical type type 2 is the ecclesia with associated with pan esophageal pressurization and type 3 is spastic type okay as we can see here atypical spastic or vigorous achalasia is type 3 and it is also known as vigorous achalasia vigorous achalasia now this is what is the finding this bird beak rat tail or pencil tip appearance is seen in achalasia cardia this is question this is the diagram which we can uh, see in the question and this is also achalasia but this is advanced achalasia in advanced cases there is development of mega esophagus okay. mega esophagus because of chronic constriction at the lower end there is massive dilatation of esophagus and it also changes its shape so there is mega esophagus and it may change its axis or uh, also known as sigmoid esophagus okay so this sigmoid esophagus or mega esophagus is seen in chronic cases of achalasia cardia okay now what are the types of achalasia types it is primary achalasia which occurs on its own or secondary achalasia which occurs due to some known causes and these known causes can be malignancy or Chagas disease. The achalasia occurring due to malignancy is also known as pseudo achalasia. Okay. Now, how to treat achalasia cardia? Okay, what is the treatment? So, the treatment of choice is Heller's cardio myotomy okay so because as we can see here there is lower esophageal sphincter contraction what we will do we will divide the muscle of the lower esophageal sphincter we will extend it till cardia and till the lower esophageal sphincter okay so that is why it is known as cardiomyotomy because we also extend it to the gastric cardia and just because we have done cardiomyotomy and now there is decrease in the lower esophageal sphincter pressure there will be increase in the reflux so to prevent reflux we will have to add a fundoplication along with that fundoplication okay so this fundoplication the fundoplications which are preferred are partial fundoplications partial fundoplications generally what we prefer are door fundoplication or two pay fundoplication okay these are the fundoplications which are commonly preferred in achalasia cardia after doing a cardiomyotomy okay now what all are the other treatment options or medications which can be used in uh, achalasia cardia so the drugs point number one drugs is ccb or nitrates which helps in relaxation of the sphincter we can go for botox injection we can do a balloon or bougie or pneumatic dilatation endoscopically pneumatic dilatation but the treatment of choice remains Heller's cardiomyotomy and nowadays there is some endoscopic procedure which is also performed which is POEM this is per oral 
endoscopic myotomy okay now this is the diagram for laparoscopic hellers cardiomyotomy okay and now this is a fundoplication which has been done after this cardiomyotomy fundoplication okay so this is the treatment of choice this is a diagram showing no uh, this is a diagram showing poem okay this poem is a type of nodes surgery which is a natural orifice transluminal endoscopic surgery what we do in poem we suppose this is esophagus this is the mucosa we divide the mucosa here dilate this tract enter through the endoscope go till the muscle divide the muscle here take our endoscope out and close this mucosal injury with the clips okay so there will be a myotomy but the problem is there will be increased reflux after this myotomy and we have not done any anti reflux procedure so this is not the treatment of choice for ecclesia cardia the treatment of choice is hellers myotomy with endoplication okay now what we people are doing in uh, mega esophagus or uh, sigmoid esophagus in mega esophagus or sigmoid esophagus the treatment of choice is laparoscopic hellers myotomy in case if it is fails then we'll go for esophagectomy okay directly we will not go for esophagectomy we will first do hellers myotomy in case if it fails then we will go for esophagectomy in mega esophagus okay now there is a patient which is coming to you with complaints of reflux and there is presence of severe chest pain and on barium swallow you detected this finding so what is the diagnosis so the diagnosis is diffuse esophageal spasm okay and what is this finding this finding is cork screw esophagus on barium swallow okay so this is a very important question before going to diffuse esophageal spasm i will first explain the types of contractions to you esophageal contraction so esophageal contractions okay esophageal contractions are of three types primary esophageal contraction secondary esophageal contraction and tertiary esophageal contraction so the primary esophageal contraction is triggered by voluntary swallowing so whenever i am swallowing there is a primary esophageal contraction which is taking place and because of this food bolus which i have swallowed there is a local distension due to this local distension there is secondary contraction and the tertiary contraction is non progressive and non peristaltic okay so you can see here primary contraction secondary contraction and tertiary contraction this primary contraction is progressive triggered by voluntary swallowing and this secondary contraction is progressive it is triggered by local distension of food bolus distension or irritation caused by food bolus and this tertiary contraction is non progressive non progressive non peristaltic okay so in diffuse esophageal spasm there is tertiary contractions of esophagus due to which there is a spasm occurs which leads to chest pain 
So, this diffuse esophageal spasm occurs because of because of tertiary contractions in the esophagus. This tertiary contractions lead to spasms and this leads to chest pain and dysphagia. Okay. This chest pain is more towards the left side more than right. Now, suppose there is a patient who is coming to your clinic with complaints of chest pain and along with dysphagia. So generally, a practitioner refers this patient to a cardiologist due to suspicion of some angina. The ECG comes out to be normal and what investigation we should do in these patients? We should go for a manometry or a barium swallow because there is a possibility of diffuse esophageal spasm in these patients. Okay, so what is the investigation of choice? Manometry. What is the finding which we are expecting? We are expecting uh, amplitude of more than 120 millimeter of mercury and a time duration of more than 2.5 seconds. Okay. The contraction, whenever there is a contraction occurring in the esophagus, the contraction is occurring with a pressure of more than 120 millimeter of mercury, a kind of a spastic tertiary contraction and occurring for a time period of more than 2.5 seconds. Then there is a diagnosis of diffuse esophageal spasm. And on barium swallow, we will be finding barium swallow, we will be finding corkscrew esophagus or rosary bead appearance or a pseudo diverticula appearance. Okay, and what is the treatment for diffuse esophageal spasm? The treatment is antispasmodics. That is CCB or nitrates. Okay, and in case if there is no response, we will go for. If no response, we will go for esophagomyotomy. Okay, we will go for esophagomyotomy, not the cardiomyotomy, esophagomyotomy. Okay, now 